Station. It's 6.45 a.m. This is the Sri Lanka Broadcasting Corporation. The news edited by Lal Mallavarachi, read by Soundi Thavam. 182,140 more families will receive benefits under the Aswasuma program from today. Nekatatapalayak, a breath to the nation tree planting ceremony, will be held today. Admission cards issued for candidates sitting for the 2023-24 GCE Ordinary Level Examination. Temperatures to reach caution level in seven provinces today. World Heritage Day falls today. The new voter registration lists will be displayed from the 6th of May. In foreign news, Israel makes own decisions, Netanyahu says after Cameron talks. In sports, the Cricket World Cup League 2 tournament between Scotland, Namibia and Oman in May postponed. The State Minister of Finance, Shehan Semasing, has announced that an additional 182,140 families will receive benefits under the Aswasma Welfare Benefit Programme from today. These families have been selected following the revision of appeals and objections. This decision brings the number of beneficiaries to 1,854,000. The government has committed 58.5 billion rupees to support these payments including arrears, which will be settled by tomorrow. Despite the expansion, around 200,000 qualified families have not yet opened the required bank accounts or updated their personal details, delaying their access to the benefits. The State Minister expressed concern over the lack of response from these families, despite extensive efforts by regional secretariats and media campaigns to reach them. Looking ahead, the government plans to commence a new survey for the Aswasma program in May, aiming to encompass 2.4 million families. A significant budget allocation of 205 billion rupees has been set aside for this initiative in the current fiscal year, underscoring the government's commitment to expanding social welfare amidst ongoing economic challenges. The auspicious time with regard to planting a sapling for the new year falls today at 10.16 a.m. This ritual should be performed clad in golden-colored attire while facing east direction. This event has been titled as the auspicious time that provides breath to the nation. The main ceremony will be held at the Ministry of Agriculture premises. From 2019, the current Minister of Agriculture and Plantation Industries, Mahinda Amravira, who served as the then Minister of Environment, took steps to include a national tree planting at an auspicious time as the auspicious ritual in the Sinhala and Tamil New Year auspicious sheet. Initiated with the aim of increasing Sri Lanka's forest cover to 30%, this auspicious ritual was taken to be named Nakatata Palayak, a breath to the nation. The planting of seeds for the Nakatata Palayak program was done recently at the Ministry of Agriculture to get the plants needed for the national planting auspicious time. The Department of Examination says admission cards were issued for candidates sitting for the 2023-24 GCE Ordinary Level Examination yesterday. School applicants can obtain the admission card through the respective principles while it will be sent via post to private candidates by next week. The Commissioner General Amit Jasundara said that in case of any problem, inquiries should be made online to the department until the 29th of this month. The O-level exam will be held from the 6th to the 15th of May. The Department of Examinations said 452,979 candidates will sit for the exam this year. This news broadcast comes to you from the Sri Lanka Broadcasting Corporation. The Department of Meteorology has issued a weather alert for extreme heat in parts of the island today. Accordingly, the heat index, the temperature felt on the human body, is expected to reach caution level at some places, in the northern, north-central, western, Sabragamo, eastern, southern and northwestern provinces and in the Monaragala district. In its advisory, the department cautioned that heat cramps and heat exhaustion continued activity could result in heat stroke. 
World Heritage Day falls today. Every year on April 18th, people celebrate World Heritage Day, also known as the International Day for Monuments and Sites. This day is dedicated to promoting the importance of cultural heritage and raising awareness about the need to preserve historical sites and monuments across the globe. The day celebrates the unique and diverse cultural heritage across the world and encourages people to appreciate and safeguard it for future generations. The International Council on Monuments and Sites proposed the idea of World Heritage Day in 1982 and it was approved by UNESCO's General Conference the following year. The first World Heritage Day was celebrated in 1983 and since then it has become an important event for promoting awareness about cultural heritage. The main aim of this day is to increase awareness about the importance of preserving cultural heritage sites and monuments. That's local news. The main news story is brought to you by Siddhaleta Vedamahatma. The election commission said that the new voter registration list will be displayed in all Grama Niladari offices from the 6th of May. This will be available in all district secretariats, election officers, divisional secretariats and provincial councils as well. The election commission stated that after checking the voter register, voters who do not have their name included in the list should file a claim in the relevant district election office. The relevant application is available on the website of the election commission and came to you in the main news story. The main news story was brought to you by Siddhalepa Vedamahatma. On to watch light, the health officials have noticed the significant prevalence of diarrheal disease among children these days, urging parents to exercise caution. The Lady Ridgeway Hospital consultant pediatrician Dr. Deepal Pereira said, it is a normal scenario to witness an uptick in cases of child diarrhea following the extended holidays since children tend to consume more food from outside sources. The symptoms could include frequent bowel movements, abdominal pain or cramps, loss of appetite, nausea and vomiting. If these children are visible, if these symptoms are visible in children, parents are encouraged to immediately take their children for medical care and came to you in Watchlight. Coming up, World News. Making headlines this morning, Israel makes own decisions, Netanyahu says after Cameron talks. 17 dead in Russian missile attack on Shenhiv. Dubai airport chaos as UAE and Oman reel from deadly storms. Benjamin Netanyahu has told UK Foreign Secretary Lord Cameron that Israel would make its own decisions over how to respond to an Iranian attack. He said his government would do everything necessary to defend itself during talks the British government had hoped would prevent escalation. Mr Netanyahu has repeatedly vowed to retaliate to the unprecedented missile and drone assault at the weekend. Lord Cameron told him any response should be smart and limited. A Russian missile attack has killed 17 people in the city of Chernihiv in northern Ukraine, according to emergency services. More than 60, including three children, were injured in the attack, which hit an eight-story building in a densely populated area, the city's mayor said. Three missiles had struck close to the center of the city, officials said. The attack came hours after reports of Ukrainian strike on a Russian military airfield in occupied Crimea. Heavy rains have been battering Gulf states, causing flash floods that have killed 20 people and disrupted flights at the world's second busiest airport. The Dubai airport said it was facing very challenging conditions on Wednesday. It advised passengers not to turn up as runways were inundated with water. Further north, a man died when his car was caught in flash floods. In Oman, rescuers found the body of a girl in Saham, bringing the death toll in the country to 19 since Sunday. Back to the headlines of the world news, Israel makes own decisions, Netanyahu says, after Cameron talks. 17 dead in Russian missile strike on Shenhiv, and the Dubai airport chaos as UAE and Oman reel from deadly storms. That concludes this bulletin of world news. And on to development news. The Department of Immigration and Emigration said a new visa process will be in effect from today. The new visa system, related fees, requirements to be filled 
and the period of stay in the country were recently announced via a special gazette. Details regarding the online method can be obtained via the official website www.srilankaevisa.lk. The Controller General of Immigration and Emigration, Harsha Ilukpitya, said applicants can submit visa applications online from several countries under the new system. Tourist visas can be obtained for six months through the new visa process. Student visas for foreign nationals will also be issued for the full period of studies, which could be up to four years before their arrival. Applicants can also supply the normal visa and medical visa through the online system. That came to you in Development News. Moving on with Sports News. The Cricket World Cup League 2 tournament between Scotland, Namibia and Oman in May near Dundee has been postponed as unprecedented poor weather has delayed pitch preparations. The round-robin event at Fort Hill, home of Forfordshire, to be held from the 2nd to the 12th of May, will now be staged in Italy. Adverse weather has affected work on the square and ground infrastructure. The decision was taken following the consultation between the three competing nations and the ICC. Each team will play 36 one day internationals across nine triangular series up to December 2026, with the top four teams going to a final 10-team World Cup qualifier. That's Sports News, Business News, up next. Go ekatiyana youth ekatha life cricket change ekatha niyamita setena aswa agena dekha puri na habe karna youth ekatha niyamita setena friendship ekatha mena. The all-new NSB Ithrumitru account NSB I am a plan for your dream. Business news sponsored by National Savings Bank, the safest place for your money. The Dehivala Zoological Gardens collected 4.85 million rupees as revenue during April 13th, 14th and 15th. The Zoological Gardens Assistant Director, Dinushika Manavadu, said that's business news, economic news to follow. Business news, sponsored by National Savings Bank, the safest place for your money. Go ekatiyana youth ekatha life ekhe change ekatha niya meta set penna aswa agena dekha puri na habe karna youth ekatha niya meta set penna friendship meta menna the all new NSB Ithrumitru account NSB I am a plan for your dream. On to economic news, State Finance Minister Shehan Sema Singh took part in the World Bank's Biodiversity Financing Forum on the sideline of the IMF World Bank Spring Meeting in Washington on Tuesday. The Colombo Stock Exchange introduced listing of green bonds in April last year. The money raised from green bonds, a nature-linked debt instrument, could be used only for green projects such as renewable energy. That's economic news. Weather report. Shahs of Thunder Shahs Ilok had several places in the western and Sabrugama provinces also in the Gaul and Matara districts after 2 p.m. Showers or thundershowers may occur at a few places in the north central, central and northwestern provinces, also in the Manar districts during the afternoon or night. Misty conditions can be expected at some places in the western, Sabragamo and central provinces and in the Gaul and Matara districts during the morning hours. To conclude this bulletin of news, a recap of the headlines. 182,140 more families will receive benefits under the Aswasuma program from today. Nakatata Palayak, a breath to the nation tree planting ceremony, will be held today. Admission cards issued for candidates sitting for the 2023 24 GCE ordinary level examination. Temperatures to reach caution level in seven provinces today. World Heritage Day falls today. The new voter registration list will be displayed from the 6th of May. Israel makes own decisions, Netanyahu says, after Cameron talks. The Cricket World Cup League 2 tournament between Scotland, Namibia and Oman in May postponed. With that, we conclude this morning's news broadcast. And now it's back across the glass pane to your morning host, Dilshan, to keep you well entertained this beautiful Thursday morning. A very good morning to you, Dilshan, and it's all yours.